So what's up YouTube? It's me Hippo again today and I've got another take on the um, hazard protection build today. Not quite as high but uh, it does the job and has a little bit more utility than the other um, status build uh, hazard protection. So what it's going to do is, is give you a, a bit of a lifeline uh, and more so in PvP. So as always let's check the specialization tree, start from there and see what we've got. So we're using the firewall, uh, this gives us a stronger shield. Um, it also allows us to um, basically burn enemies when we lose our armor, but it's disabled in PvP. However, that doesn't matter. Uh, we've got another piece that'll help us with that. Uh, extra damage to targets within 10 meters, that's great. Um, cover to cover move, hmm, not really going to help us too much. Synergizing weapons, the flamethrower, which is very strong. Uh, the cluster fragmentation grenades, 20% um, extra burn duration, health on kill, and the really, really strong medkit, which is great. So, what I'm going to do is go down to the range, take a look at the range, see it's on Heroic, check the build, have a look at the stat sheet, and talk about how to use the build in the range. So, as always, the range is on Heroic, so we can see that we can get a clear lifeline of what, what damage we're doing against other builds. <clears throat> and to look at the build, let's have a look. So, for this build, I'm using the Rock and Roll Shotgun, um, just because it's the highest um, damage shotgun that you can do over time so sustained damage is what we're putting down on targets i'm using crit chance on the laser pointer and crit chance on the mini reflex and the reason why is just to up the amount of crit that i've got because shotguns inherently don't really have a lot of crit and then the other weapon that i'm using is the backfire obviously this gun makes you bleed a little bit um, look on the talent on that and it's called payment in kind dealing enemies to damage adds a stack of one plus critical hit damage up to 200 stacks so that's 200 percent extra crit damage lasting for 10 seconds on reload 10 percent uh, what's that 0.5 percent of your armor is dealt per stack so it could be a very nasty bleed 200 stacks that's like nearly 100 percent armor damage so if you've got bleed protection it doesn't it doesn't hurt you, you can just use the gun as if it was normal. Uh, the pistol, we're just using the TDI card custom. You need to roll pistol damage on there at some point. With optimists, so every so many bullets missing will increase the weapon damage by X. Um, for the mask, I'm using a critical hit chance Seska uh, mask, which gives me one piece of critical hit chance, 10%. 15% weapon damage, uh, importantly, Hazard protection uh, and then crit chance, crit damage with a mod inside. On the chest piece, uh, I have a badger tough which gives me shotgun damage. I'm using a shotgun, so I have armor, health, hazard protection, and very importantly, bleed resistance. Not hitting that 100% cap on the bleed resistance may force you to put in extra bleed resistance mods, so the higher you can get, the better. Unfortunately, the health, uh, I prefer crit damage or crit chance, um, but it's not really. You know going to hurt having a little bit of extra health for the holster uh, i'm wearing the imperial dynasty the reason why is enemies that get close uh, get burnt so within 20 meters if they come close to you they get set on fire and that can proc in pvp so if enemies are trying to get too close to you it can give you a minute to run away if you're getting low on health or you've just got too many there and you can't fight uh, this has status effect and hazard protection very importantly the hazard protection is an important piece to have on every single piece of gear on the backpack, we've got armor regeneration uh, on a bellstone armory, and it's the liquid engineer. So basically, um, what this does is it has perfect blood sucker. Killing an enemy adds a stack that refreshes per stack of 12% bonus armor for 10 seconds. So you can get basically up to 120% of your armor. And although you're not going to see massive value out of that in PvP, in PvE, you definitely will. Um, now that's up to you, you can change that backpack talent um, because I do find myself using this a little bit more in PvE. However, will it work in PvP? Yes, of course it'll work in PvP. <clears throat> so uh, the in-slot mod on there is burn resistance just because it's another common type of status effect that's in the DZ. Bleed and burn are the two most common types that you're gonna see. Uh, I also have just a little bit of skill haste, that's helpful. For the gloves, uh, I'm going for armor, armor regeneration, and hazard protection, which is okay. And the Yarl gloves themselves give 10% hazard protection. For the knee pads, this gives us the second piece of the um, brand set bonus, which gives us 10% hazard protection again. And uh, I've rolled this into weapon damage, hazard protection, and it's got a roll of critical hit damage on it. So for the skills, 
I have the drone and I'm just using the fixer drone uh, and that has a skill tier of one so it's just a little bit better pull the pistol out it's going to be at two it's got duration health and damage reduction the damage reduction on it could be swapped out for say armor repair but I don't have one on this character right now which is a bit unfortunate uh, and the other thing is the shield so basically we're going to get a tier 4 shield we have three blues and we have one yellow so <clears throat> that's going to give us a tier 4 shield meaning that translates to a shield with about 3.5 million health just under uh, for the mods shield health in both slots and damage per enemy that stood in front of your shield at 5% so the best way to use this build is basically you have to know that you're you're a little bit more tanky than a damage guy, but you certainly can't stand into gunfire the way that a tank can. Um, however, you have a lot more utility to sort of use status effect, even against their own teammates. Look, if a, if an enemy throws a, a fire grenade, you can just walk straight through that. And, and potentially, even if they're stood right in it, you know, by standing in their own grenade, if you coax them into a hazard and you're stood in it, <clears throat> that actually might damage them as well. So don't forget, you can walk through fire, you can walk through uh, other things, but the weapons, how they work, you have the backfire SMG. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly elite named. You can see the holster icon cooling down there. That's gonna set another enemy on fire every time that cools down. So you can see on the side of the weapon, we're, we're going up there, 54. Okay, so no bleed damage when we reload the weapon, which is exactly what we want. And as we shoot, we're building more and more stacks. Okay. So by the time we get to the end of this magazine, we're going to be hitting the cap. And we're hitting for like 300,000. So the fact that we've got no damage really for the, the build hitting for 300,000 on a crit is is a lot um, and once you get to this point the kills are going to be quite easy to come by because obviously you've got that elevated damage so bloodsucker actually can give you quite a lot of armor if you're going for just weak targets picking out little weak targets and sort of build your way up to the, the bigger targets as you can see I'm getting a lot of armor just by sitting in cover <clears throat> that's practically double what I've got as far as armor wise you can pull out your shield. This is going to give you a bit of extra damage too. It's going to let you just burn down enemies that little bit quicker. And we've also got the shotgun, just because if that other weapon runs out of ammo or you just need to put some sustained damage down on the target, you can cover quite a big area with the shotty. Plus each pellet crits. The only trade-off is it's just a little inaccurate and it jumps around everywhere. However, Sometimes that's what you want, right? You know, you just want to cover an area and just sort of cover somebody or <clears throat> push your way down a corridor that's, that's locked. So the best way to use this build is, is not to try and take people that are shooting you head on. You do have lifelines like uh, Unbreakable, which is going to give you 100% of your armor back in PvE. And then in PvP, it's slightly less. Um, and Bloodsucker is also going to help you if you play smart and just take out smaller enemies first. You know, don't don't go straight for the biggest target and you know just work your way up slowly. Um, as for the pistol, we can pull this out and sort of use that at the start. And it's going to build up damage as we we shoot, um, and that's also going to help your drone and your shield when you first pop it out. So if we're in a bit of a tight spot, we've got a tier five shield and a tier two drone. And like we say, the hazards aren't going to hurt us. There's no hazards really here at the range, apart from this weapon, which is going to make us bleed when we reload. So, as you can see, reloading, no bleed status effect. So you can use this to your advantage. <clears throat> those guys that just throw out those little bleeder hives um, and, <clears throat> you know, just using skills. You really want to focus those players first. Chances are they're going to be a lot squishier than a tank. So you're going to have a lot more armor than a a skill or a damage um, I wouldn't really advise running straight up to a damage player that would probably get you melted but when you've got those sort of tech people that sit by the door and put the little hives down and things like that this is going to allow you to sort of run out and surprise them um, and set them on fire maybe even um, and then just that burst them down and if you get a little bit of over armor just go for the next weaker target um, other than that emphasize that a few times now so work on the small targets first usually skill builds or just little you know targets 
Let's have a look at the stat sheet so you can see exactly what is entailed in the build. I'll go through any important ports that we might see here that it might be a critical part of the build, I guess. So payment in kind. We're avoiding that bleed damage on the backfire. Seventy-three crit damage and fifty-two crit chance, which is good because we've stacked a lot into blue and not really much into red. Uh, and we do have a yellow as well, so we're quite. We say a two-three-one, so we're a bit more distributed, I guess. You know, we do have an equal distribution near enough across the board. Okay, thirty-six percent shotgun crit chance. A little bit of health and armor damage, which is good. 40 into all weapons damage. 37 into shotgun. SMG could be a little higher, I guess. We just need to optimize that. But yeah, that's 40 and 28. Talents we're running again. Perfect blood sucker. Remember, start weak, work your way up. Perfectly unbreakable. <clears throat> that's great. When it procs, get the hell out of there. Dragon's Glare, that's going to set a target on fire. If it's the first target that's near you, shoot at them first. Uh, if it's a big target, you know, you can use that to get away and go focus on somebody else for a minute. Seska, two piece. Bellstone, one piece. Badger Tough, one piece. Yarl, one piece. About 1.3 million armor with 17,000 armor regen, which is quite you know small amount, but if you get out of combat, it can help you just sort of regen a little bit. Just a little bit more max health than normal. Reasonable amount of health on kill. Not much, but, you know, something. This is where it really starts to come into play. 90% all hazards protection, so 90% of hazards are just not even going to bother you. Um, if you get stuck down, it'll literally be for a point of a second. Uh, bleed resistance is at 99.7, so it's pretty much every bleed status will just not do anything. And if it does put you on bleed, it'll be less than even a second, so it's not going to do any damage. Burn resistance, 99.5. Again, if you get put on fire, it's going to be less than a second. Blind death, pretty much the same for all these stats within the hazard. If you do get status effect, it's going to last for a very, very short amount of time. Um, and most of the time, you're just going to end up ignoring the status effect. Drone, remember we can turn it to a tier 2 drone if we want to pull out the pistol. Tier 4 shield if we pull out the pistol, okay. So, hopefully, that's a nice little variation on the hazard build, and that gives you something for PvE and PvP. It's a little different than the 100% because we're not all stacked into just one thing. We have a couple of other options, so you can mix and match those pieces if you so please. Just remember hazard protection everywhere, and um, the backfire is going to basically give you a, a really, really, really good buff if you build it up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.